Hi, I'm Bonnie Kimke. Welcome to my studio and welcome to Quilting on a Thread. The other day, well, actually yesterday, I was talking with one of my members on Cutie Quilter and she'd been having problems with her machine and it was just kind of feeling like it was pulling against her, especially when she was going into curves. Now, a couple of things had happened. She had recently replaced her domestic with a Cunique machine. So that's at least doubling the weight that's on her frame. Now, we all have to rely very carefully on our frame being level and being squared. But what can often pass by your attention and you won't notice it because you did nothing to piece this together, the lower carriage, which rides, you know, which you ride your upper carriage on, or in the case of having a cunique, you ride your cunique on that, on that lower carriage. That lower carriage may have come to you out of square. And what that means when I say out of square is that it is no longer perfectly aligned in square angles. Um, obviously, the bottom carriage is not a square device. And that is what confused the cutie member that I was speaking to. She says, it's not square, it's rectangle. Well, of course, it is a rectangle. But the corners must be right angles and right angled corners are considered in square. So I'm going to show you three different instruments that you probably have in your studio that you can use to easily verify that your lower carriage is in square and that you're not inadvertently pulling against something that's not in square. Because if those wheels are not riding on the track of the frame itself, if the wheels of your carriage are not riding on the track properly, you can damage your track. If the wheels of your upper carriage or your machine are not riding on the, the track of the lower carriage properly, you can scar your track on your carriage. So what I have here is a crosshair ruler. This happens to be um, an eight inch crosshair ruler. So it measures a little bit more than eight inches across. We're gonna try using this to verify square. We're also going to just take a standard ruler. This just happens to be the Omni Grip um, 12 and a half inch by two and a half inch ruler. We'll use that one. And then if you don't have one of those rulers, guess what can help you? A notebook. This happens to be a Staples six inch by nine inch notebook. So if you had an eight and a half inch by 11 inch notebook, you would use the long side to push against the frame and the short side to help you to judge square. I'm going to actually be using the long side of this six by nine inch. And this is a wonderful one for doing that because it happens to be heavy cardboard. So I'm just going to demonstrate using three different tools, whether you can I mean, how you can tell whether your lower carriage is in square. So I'm going to readjust the camera and I'm here at the back of my frame. So I'm going to readjust my camera and I'm going to show you what to do to test whether your lower carriage is in square. Right, so here we are at the back of my machine. Now, you'll notice that I have my cables tie wrapped to the back of my lower carriage. So that's not going to, as long as they're not tied inside your carriage, that's not going to affect you at all. So the first thing we're going to do is use the eight inch crosshair ruler. And I'm just going to shove it up against the side of one of the rails and pull it to the back. And if in pulling it to the back, 
when I go across and I can see that that is going to meet up like I could just simply pull that over or how about this go on the very bottom of your rail so you can go up here and you're not going to go all the way across so you just have to eyeball that let's do it instead go against the bottom do you see what I'm doing here I'm taking it I'm resting it on this back crossbar going straight to the back you know till it's pressed up entirely against the back of the frame then I'm going to pull it I mean to the side of the frame then I'm going to pull it to the back and what should happen is that should stay flush against this side rail it should be flush against the back and flush against this up rail here and if that is all flush you're square so let's say you don't have a crosshair ruler but you do have any regular quilting ruler again you can take it against the rails themselves and pull it and if it touches the back of this rail and it touches the back of that rail and stays even with the rail itself you are square now using this ruler because it's only two and a half inches wide this is the only way you can test it so you have to bring it back and it should be against both of these back stops and flush against that and let's go ahead and take it to the other side and do exactly the same thing. It's flush against this side, it's flush against the stop, and it's flush against the stop. That's square. If, let's just say you pulled it back and it's still flush against here, but there's space here, you're out of square. Take your machine off, turn this over. There's some nuts on the bottom of this, on the bottom of this brace. Loosen those, twist it until you can pull this and it's square, and then tighten all of the bolts. You'd, you'd want to loosen all four. So, if you don't have any of those, but you have a notebook, especially one that has a cardboard backing, then just press it up against the rail, pull it back. Again, same thing. And if you want, press it against the crossbar and pull it back and again you should be flush against both the back brace here and the back brace there and flush still against the wall uh, of the wall of this brace that your track rests on so if all of those things are true you are square and you can do it in both directions just to be absolutely certain so do it here, do it there, just to be certain. Do it from both sides. You only need to do it on either the front or the back because if you're out of square here, I guarantee you're out of square up front. If you're in square here, chances are you are still in square up front because if you weren't in square up front, that would twist this and you would be out of square here. And so I just wanted to show you how to verify that your lower carriage is in square with three potential tools that you are likely to have at your disposal, either in your studio or somewhere in your home. Now, you could also use, as I did when I set up my system, you could also use a carpenter square. I'm assuming if you have a carpenter square at your disposal, you already know how to use a carpenter square. So I'm not going to discuss that, especially since it would be confusing to those of us who don't know how to use a carpenter square. Now, ideally, if everything is square and level on your machine, on your system, your frame and everything else, you should be able to just move your machine in any direction horizontally vertically in circles using one finger now that may not be how you're comfortable sewing and quilting with your machine but if you're having any kind of drag using more than a single finger i mean 
using a single finger. If you find that you're having any kind of drag, then likely your frame has fallen out of level, your lower carriage has come out of square, or if you're using a domestic, your domestic isn't centered on the upper carriage. So the first thing that I would look at, of course, would be that your frame is level. But I'm assuming you've already done that. The second thing would be to check that your lower carriage is square. The third thing to check is that your machine is centered on the upper carriage or in the case of a Cunique, that your machine is perfectly balanced on the four sets of wheels. So I hope that that will help make your journey in quilting on one of our hooping frames, such as the Q zone or the cutie frame or any other hooping frame. It's going to, you're going to have similar issues to deal with on any hooping frame. So I hope this makes your journey in quilting better and more enjoyable. And I hope to see you again here on Quilting on the Thread.